well, I guess I'm not eating here. They don't want my business, obviously. Huh? Chuh. What's the best thing about being 80? The black Russians keep you going. The black Russians keep you going. All right, here's the black Russians. <laughs> yep, happy birthday, Dean. Uh, today is the uh, big 80. Uh, we've been friends for about 10 years, so I think maybe a little bit longer. Um, it's great to see you and everybody here at the, uh, the film club on Sunday 22. Uh, so we're here back home. Happy birthday, Dean. Good friend. Uh, I wish you many more. Dean, you are the first friend I made here back in 2005. So thank you for that. Uh, miss the old time since London. Happy birthday, buddy. Dean, thanks for all those books, man. I, I read a lot of them, so cool. I second that. Yeah. I second that. <laughs> Happy birthday, Dean, from Alex. Happy birthday, Dean, on your 80th, and I hope this gives you a new lease on life and you'll get out and write the next novel. Yeah, find something productive to do with your life, Dean. Absolutely. Happy birthday, Dean. I'm glad I'm getting a chance to know you here at the Film Club. I've enjoyed our conversations. Hopefully we'll have some more, uh, many more. Dean, happy birthday, mate. It's been great knowing you all these years, and I hope that we're going to be raising a few drinks and probably a couple of uh, black Russians over the next few years as well. Keep on. See you, mate. Well, Dean, you made 80. We've both seen Thailand over many decades and how it's all changed, and I hope you continue to write about it with all the wit you've shown over the years. Uh, have a great birthday, and have a great uh, year and decade and lifetime ahead. It's midnight. I'm in the PB Hotel on Soy 3 in Bangkok. I've just come from a pretty emotional experience over a dinner table that really kind of shook me uh, to my bones. Uh, and then I smoked a 200 baht joint all by myself walking up Sukhumvit back to this hotel and so, no, I'm not going to let you see my face. <laughs> and no, uh, Mr. DeMille, I am not ready for my close-up. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I am not going to sleep uh, at all. Uh, this, uh, what happened this evening was really in my life, my little small life. It was very profound, and I want to get my thoughts recorded. Uh, the arthritis in my hands has made it uh, virtually impossible to, to write notes and I can't face the keyboard at this hour. So I'm going to record it. Whether or not I include it in this week's video, I don't know yet. But here's what happened. Backstory. Last night, I went to Dean Barrett's 80th birthday party at a place called the Freeze Green Club on uh, Sukhumet Soy 22. And it's a place that combines classic movies in a private screening room with alcohol and tremendous food <laughs> and you go to this thing and you watch uh, we watched uh, 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 Dean's favorite movie which is Witness for the Prosecution with uh, Elsa Lancaster and uh, Lawton Charles Lawton fantastic movie and uh, you think to yourself God why hasn't anyone thought of this before 
Uh, anyway, it was a great party, and what was great about it, now Dean's book, Memoirs of a Bangkok Warrior, is the first book about Thailand I read in Thailand. I spent 1987 at the New York City Public Library, 42nd Street Branch, reading, well, evenings anyway, after work or days I wasn't working, uh, reading books about Thailand. But Dean's uh, was the first book, his first book was the first book I read about Thailand here. He has gone on to write, I don't know, 20 more books. Uh, guy's 80 years old, he's been prolific, he's, been, he's a hard worker. But that one was really, really important to me. So I came up here to Bangkok specifically to go to Dean's birthday party and tell him how much I admired that book back in the day and uh, admired him and I wished him many more happy years. And it was heartening to see a lot of people come out for Dean, a lot of, okay, white men of a certain age <laughs> who are all, you know, lifers in Thailand. They've all been here 30, 40 years. And, uh, they came out in, in, in droves, in dozens, to, to watch a movie with Dean on his birthday, because that's what he wanted to do. And uh, I thought, you know, it's lovely, but it's the end of something. The people, the expats, who have done creative writing about Thailand began with, I suppose, uh, Jack Reynolds and A Woman of Bangkok and went through Carol Hollinger and Bill Page and, and, and Colin Piprell and uh, James Eckhart and others. And uh, they, there's, no, there's no young men sitting in Coldwater Flats in Bangkok today, today writing the next Bangkok novel. That's just done. Uh, if anybody's doing anything, they're vlogging. Uh, but nobody's writing. Nobody's writing books anymore. There's really, you know, James Newman and his contemporaries are sort of, uh, well, not sort of, there's flat out the last of that, of that movement, of whatever that was, that genre, which has been so important to me. <laughs> I mean, I, I came up here to tell a guy whose book I read 35 years ago that I liked his book. Uh, to me, this, this genre is, is terribly important. And it's over. It's done. It's finished. <laughs> you know, there's the canon. Boom. <laughs> Read these books and you're done. And so that was kind of a bittersweet thought, right? A poignant thought. And I came home last night with that thought. Tonight, so there's this, this writer named uh, Lawrence Osborne, who I admire tremendously. Uh, he's written three books that uh, center at least on Thailand or begin in Thailand. One is called Hunter in the Dark, one is called The Glass Kingdom, and one is called Bangkok Days. And Bangkok Days is at least technically the very finest piece of writing I think ever produced about this country. The book just blew my socks off when I read it. It is so fine. The quality of the writing is so fine. The mood it is set. There is sentimentality without mawkishness. It's a very masculine voice without being aggressive or threatening or abrasive. It's, it's just a phenomenal piece of writing. I've always wanted to tell him so. I thought he lives in Bangkok. I'm going to go to Bangkok. God knows when I'll go to Bangkok again. I have no desire to ever go to Bangkok. And I said, all right, well, I'm going to, go, I'm going to see if I can reach him, see if I can get a, a, a fanboy moment. Can I just get him buttonholing for five minutes to get a selfie and tell him I adore his book? So I got him. I, got, I reached him through the internet and he said, yeah, I'm going to be at this restaurant at this hour. Come meet me. So, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I took a shower. <laughs> I smoked 32 cigarettes in a row and I went to meet, you know, my hero. And uh, I was expecting five minutes. I was hoping for five minutes. He invited me to dinner. He bought me dinner in two different restaurants. When this guy goes out on the town, he goes out on the town. It's not like Steve who eats in the same 10 restaurants in Turtle Beach every week and doesn't pay more than 70 baht for a meal. Uh, these were really nice restaurants, really good food. And he had two friends with him. And it was obvious that he had, he had been planning to go eat with these two friends and he invited me along. And I was very flattered by that, incredibly flattered by that, very pleased. And I felt like a fly on the wall. I was listening to three professional writers writing about, or not writing about, talking about the world of legacy publishing 
and you know, $10 million movies and, and, and contracts and agents and stuff. And it was fascinating to sit there. <laughs> but gradually it dawned on me, these guys don't have a clue who, who Dean Barrett is or who Colin Pipper was or who Jack Reynolds was or who Steve Ross is. They operate and live <laughs> at a level that's so far beyond this little ghetto of, of expats writing about Thailand that we're not even on the radar at all. And pow! <laughs> that was so, that was ego crushing. You know, that realization over the amused bush was ego crushing. So I went from being a fly on the wall to being the, the child at the table, the, the slow witted child at the table. Ron McMillan, another writer up in Chiang Mai, recently criticized me online for bogarting the conversation. Yeah, typically I'm the guy who lectures at the dinner table. I'm the guy who shares interesting factoids. <laughs> Not tonight. Man, I sat there and I listened to these guys talk, you know, <laughs> in the first person about places and things that I'll never experience. And I left that dinner, that wonderful, delicious, expensive dinner, feeling about two inches tall. You know, if Steve, any opportunity for Steve to kick himself in the ass, and make himself feel small, he'll take it. And I walked, I smoked that 200 baht joint and I walked up, it made me very pensive, <laughs> very thoughtful, very introspective. And I walked up Sukhumvit and I realized, you know, how many people do you see at midnight on Sukhumvit from Asok to uh, Nana? A couple thousand? Hookers, taxi drivers, Indian tourists, Russian tourists, African tourists, Pimps, touts, bartenders, beggars, five-year-old beggars, 105-year-old beggars, thousands and thousands of people I passed between that restaurant and this hotel. Not a single one of them can tell you who Dean Barrett is or Steve Ross or Lawrence Oliver or, uh, I'm sorry, Lawrence Osborne or <laughs> Oliver Benjamin or Faulkner or Hemingway or William Wilder, or, or Elsa Lancaster, or Charles Lawton. They, you know, none of that is on their radar. And the things that are on their radar, I couldn't identify them in a lineup. I haven't a clue about what books or you know, movies or what they, what they see, what they enjoy, what they experience. So I felt a little better. <laughs> I felt a little better. And having gotten this off my chest, I feel a little more calm. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your patience. As always, that's my time. Please like, subscribe, share. You can buy me a cup of coffee if you like. Well, Lawrence Osborne bought me two very expensive dinners tonight. You can buy me a cup of coffee. <laughs> I think there's a PayPal link. You want to send me cash. That's lovely. Uh, I don't mind that a bit. And thank you, thank you, thank you for even just watching, even if you don't do any of that other stuff. Thank you very much for letting me talk for 10 minutes. I feel much better. I will see you next week. It's so hard to get good help these days.
Yes. <laughs>